Okay, SDR Fest, I am super, super pumped. And when I tell you, super excited this time around to have with me Dr. Neil Shah for the third time. I mean, this is like <laughs> so exciting because he was with us for, for SDRCon 2021, 2022. And now we're bringing him back because he's always, I mean, he always has this really interesting things happening in his in his SDR uh, career slash portfolio. Now, as a brief introduction, if you have not met Dr. Shah yet, he is a musculoskeletal a uh, radiologist based in New Jersey, um, who, you know what, we'll, we'll actually head into his story, but welcome, Neil. Super excited to have you on. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Nice to see you again. I feel like I'm chatting with a friend now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this has been a, quite a journey. Um, started in 2020 at the end, mm -hmm. uh, like did a Q4 purchase for my first STR, mm -hmm. did the 100 hours um, and got it in service. And uh, once you start committing to that, it was like no looking back. You know, you change oh, yeah. and your oh, mindset yeah. and your whole outlook on uh, how you're doing things. Um, and uh, you just start building an infrastructure for doing more. Um, yep. So yep. But let's 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 take them all the way back because one of the of, of the things I remember. So if you if you guys have heard my story or even read the book that I, that that were that that, that that we're talking about. This is the doctor that told me about his short-term rental during his interview with me in, in 2021 that I, that I went like, wait, 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 what? So can you tell us about that very short-term rental that you bought? Probably your first or second, actually. Just basically take us all the way back um, to how you got started with, 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 with um, short-term rentals. That first one that you bought, how it performed in the first five months so that they don't have to hear it from my mouth. They can hear it from your mouth. And yeah. then we can go from there. Sure. I mean, this first one was just kind of like, you know, you have all that doubt, but then um, just the timing of it, everything kind of exceeded all expectations. So it was kind of a nice way to start. Um, but, you know, you have to kind of base uh, life on reality and, uh, you know, and, and the averages of how things turn out. But th this one was was pretty phenomenal. Um, I started, um, you know, learning about real estate kind of in more depth in the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. um by like september october i had um, my first str under contract as well as an ltr and i closed early december it's in destin uh, florida emerald coast place i'd never heard of um but it turns out it has one of the top beaches in, in north america mm -hmm. um, i linked up with the short-term shop one of the realtor groups um avery carl was the lead uh, realtor there and she kind of held my hand a little bit through that deal um mm -hmm. I paid seven twenty. Uh, I think like four or five properties went pending around the same time, so I kind of was scrambling to just find something that would work. Mm -hmm. We had a pool, really small pool, um, but it was super close to the beach and it was in a nice neighborhood. Um, it was like a nineteen ninety eight property. Um, it was five bedrooms, four bathrooms, sleeps fourteen. Mm -hmm. So it had kind of a lot of check marks for what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, went down there to set it up. I remember meeting a few handymen and stuff like that. One of them was like, um, you know, in like, I don't know, five, 10 years, this can be worth a million dollars. And I was like, oh man, I, I can't believe that. That That's not going to happen. Um, and I had all these doubts, you know, I, I right before closing, I didn't sleep very well. Oh man. Um, I had different cleaners go in there just to kind of give me quotes. One tried to scare, a lot of them try to scare you because they want to say you need a deep clean and mm -hmm. the people you know, or weren't doing a good job. Um, and those things may have been true, um, but they tried to scare me out of buying the house too. Um, but I stuck with it. I, I figured it was the first one um, I needed to learn. I'd been thinking about real estate for six years, um, listening to bigger pockets. So mm -hmm. I was motivated. And um, uh, so um, I got projections from property managers. They said 80 to 110K is what it would do. Um, Avery Carl said, you know, 110 is very doable. Um, I was skeptical because I thought she was trying to sell me something. Mm -hmm. But basically, um, you know, once I was in service, I got bookings right away for the end of the year, which um, I was pleasantly surprised. Didn't think people would be going to the beach for Christmas, but they definitely do. They did, uh, yeah. And then, you know, January, February were a little slow. And then uh, spring break rolled on in. And uh, I realized I didn't buy a dud. I started getting bookings. And by the end of the year, I had about 160 eight i think um thousand dollars in bookings so it was like a solid year um i was 2021 yeah um, and so i felt pretty good about um 
the business model. Um, interest rates, you know, at that point were still uh, fairly low. I think that one was at three percent. I ended up um, like uh, I don't know if it was twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. I think twenty twenty two in February. I think it was around the time the Ukraine war uh, was starting because I remember the loan processor um, said rates are dipping right now temporarily because the the war and it may not last. And so I did a cash out refi mm. in February. So I got um, three hundred thousand out of that. I think they um, appraised it at like over 1.2. And uh, since then, it, it's probably like around 1.5, but I don't know exactly because the market's kind of yeah. uh, a little ways temporarily, but I think it'll probably pick up again too. Um, I believe it. So that one far exceeded all expectations and it was a great way to start. The cost seg on it, you know, with most appreciation, cover the down payment. Um, so it was like the snowball started and... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I started making a lot of friends in this whole world. Um, you know, that course I took over the summer, the year to freedom, it really helped. And uh, I had a whole network from there. And a bunch of us were kind of going into STRs, uh, despite it not being like the in thing. We just kind of with our W2 jobs and full time status, it kind of just made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was number one. I was under contract for two more new builds that were going to be done at some indeterminate time in the Smokies. Um, Avery hooked me up with those, uh, they're like $1,500 down payments and I was still scared. I was going to lose the money. I don't know. I was just too nervous, but I, I, I did it anyway. Um, I got a ski house in Utah because that's just one of those places I've always loved. Um, didn't look like it was going to pencil out, but it has, um, just got lucky with the location, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's near a new ski resort called the Mayflower. That's going to be part of Deer Valley. Um, so I think it's going to just that path of progress, I guess. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, so the portfolio includes, yeah, there's two new builds in Smokies. I bought in Gulf Shores just because um, it's kind of in the same kind of yeah. area. Um, but it's separate, <laughs> yeah, but separate enough to um, kind of learn from a new market. So I'm geographically separated. So mostly in the Southeast, except for Utah. Um, mm -hmm. And I have teams in each area that... Um, basically through networking with other people that they've, they've helped me build it. Um, and I self-manage still. Um, I do have a VA who helps, who's very good. Um, and yeah, and I'm still working full-time. Maybe a little extra than full-time. That is that last sentence, in case you missed that sentence, can you just repeat that very last sentence you just said? <laughs> but, uh, and I'm still working full-time and maybe a little extra. Still working full-time and a little extra. Just amazing. I let you just describe the story because... You know, sometimes we, we we interrupt and we you know check it. I mean, like basically, um, check out the story. But it's it's great to to talk people just like hear the full, the full breath, and then we can go into like not really each of them because because you've 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 grown your grown your portfolio over time. Now, looking back now, we're in, we're, we we are recording this you know at the end of twenty twenty three. Looking back now. At when you started, if you had to go back and tell yourself something, like advise yourself, what would you what would you say? You know, I had a pretty good mindset um, at okay. that, um, so I was pretty committed. Yeah, um, I had my own internal doubts, but I was like, I'm going to do this um, unless yeah. there's major red flags. Um, so I don't know if I would change anything because I was okay. rooted enough where I look at my yeah um, cash on cash calculators. I mean, I took as much risk as I think I, I was probably willing to take at that time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like people say, you know, you watch that movie, there's some movie where they're like, you know, back to the future or something like that. Right. Or I forget mm -hmm. which they're like going back in time, like buy Yahoo or something like that. Like, yeah, of course I could say I'd buy like 10 more of these properties or, you know, the $1,500 down payments for the new builds and I'd figure it out, do more. But, um, you know, the, the portfolio is at like 11 or 12. Um, I feel like I've been aggressive enough. I yeah. want to be able to sleep at night, um, you mm -hmm. know, have reserves um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. but I've been pretty aggressive for that. Yeah, no, yeah, no, seriously. And okay, so let's let's even start from the time time commitment because for a lot of people, what really scares them about even venturing into short-term rentals, I know myself for sure, at least as of five years ago, the idea of a short-term rental was like, oh my goodness, who's going to deal with all that? All yeah. that being in quotes, but you said you're working full time, and you're you're able to manage successfully 
a portfolio of 10 to 12 short-term rentals. How are you able to actually do that? Like what? Right. So, I mean, peak yeah. season is different than right now. Right now, yeah. it feels like it's not hard at all, right? Because there's a few uh, clumped bookings like over the holidays. So maybe this weekend I'll get a, a little bothered. But um, in general, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I have awesome cleaning teams. I've been really good about kind of getting lucky with interviewing people and kind of getting a sense of who they are. I think as physicists and physicists, physicians, we have some sense of how to read people. Um, and you can kind of tell their work based on how the guests um, give feedback. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'll use like redundancy, like an inspector, or if I have a handyman do a job, have the cleaner and inspect it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, ask for pictures. So as long as you kind of build a system of trust, um, most things kind of flow like they should. I mean, I, I'm not going to say I've had no hiccups. I can talk about some of those too. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, you know, it's just a couple of quick texts, text messages, and uh, we're all we're all kind of on the phone a lot in general. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I can still go to a concert, or go to a movie. I mean, it's helpful to have a virtual assistant and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, traveled internationally, um, yeah. things like that. Although when I do travel internationally, I, I kind of am more certain to have like phone coverage, mm -hmm. uh, just mm -hmm. so I can check in a little more. Um, but um, it hasn't been unbearable in any way i mean it, there have been challenging times where like i had a guest i'll tell you one of the stories fall asleep in the shower he must have been inebriated on something um he was like the last one to go to bed that night in his group uh his two-story building so on the upstairs master bath shower he fell asleep on the floor of the shower um and thank god he was fine but he blocked the drain and then the water kind of elevated out of the shower into the bathroom into the master bedroom down into the garage into the foyer and um i didn't hear about it till that next morning and the guest was like hey we see water coming out of your electrical panel what should we do i go well can you tell me a little bit more about how that water got there and then he told me that and so um yeah i mean so that made for an interesting morning we were uh on vacation actually um but we were driving home from canada so on my drive home, myself and my VA, we made a few phone calls, got a water mitigation company in there, called insurance, um, Airbnb air cover, just trying to figure out what to do. Um, okay. So I ended up, um, I wasn't sure, it seemed like it was going to be extensive damage, it ended up being 65K, oh, in, wow. which is estimated by the insurance company. I think if I had done like you know, like the flooring was bad, but they're like, replace all the flooring in the entire house, but only two rooms had issues. So I just went back to the builder, found out the exact flooring, because usually you can't match it, but I found the exact one. So yeah. I only had to replace the two rooms. So I ended up saving quite a bit. Um, and then I got money for lost rent. Mm -hmm. I didn't have bookings, but I told the insurance company, I'm like, well, you know, a lot of the bookings are coming last minute. So I don't know what my lost rent's going to be, but I'll give you my historical data. So I sent them my 2022 owner risk graph and it showed yeah. $22,000 in rent that I have for that period. So they gave me, they just cut that check, which was mm. actually pretty awesome. Um, and then, yeah, then they had this uh, damage. So um, I think all in all, I probably put like 15 K into fixing it. So like, even when these bad things happen, then there's like a silver lining. I, I, yeah. I got like rent and I probably profited a little bit. Now I'm not going to wait. I'm a little worried about my, my insurance premium for next year, but we'll see. Um, and yeah. that was owned by, that was owned, you know, that was the insurance was in a certain name, so it should be limited to not all my properties. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, so things happen. Uh, I'm not going to say it's all roses and direct deposits. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Like a lot of times I don't know guests are there, um, cause you know, everything's automated with the messaging. And, uh, you know, you just get an email saying the deposit was made and it's pretty nice. You know what's funny? I'm glad that you said that because I've been saying this. And sometimes when I say it, I'm like, is it because you're just not paying attention? Like maybe Tony is paying attention. Like that's my husband. Right. <laughs> but now hearing you say that, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You can totally run this business without knowing that you have guests <laughs> because yeah. they come, they get the code, they, they stay, the codes get deactivated, your cleaners get you know, get a notice automatically, they leave, they clean. If nothing, you know, if if no like major water damage happens in the property, yeah. you probably don't even need to hear about it. 
Right, right. And that was like the worst thing that happened in three years. Of hosting. Right. And right. the more your occupancy is, say, like in the summer mm -hmm. season, like, you know, there's a cleaner in there every four days or a week. Yes. And there's guests in there. So people are going to tell you if anything's going wrong. Some of the time. Exactly. So, like, you really don't know what's going on. And there's the money's pilot, you know, just coming in. So it's pretty yeah. nice. Um, you know, in the off season, you have to be like, oh, the last guest wasn't there for like a week now. Mm -hmm. just, maybe I'll send the cleaner to do a touch up. Or you have a standing rule with your cleaner. Hey, someone's been there. Just make sure you go check on it. Yeah. But, you, you know, that's one of those tasks where I'll have the VA kind of remind them just in case. Because you don't want things to fall through the crack. Um, but, yeah, having the VA, like an extra person, is a huge asset. So for those who are listening now, they're probably wondering, okay, VA, how, how did you find your VA? Kind yeah. of what you, yeah, how's that relationship? That's like a whole talk in and of itself. Yeah, of course. There's a I bunch know. of people who are using different services. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, like, I, I've said before to you, um, I, I leverage all the relationships I have. I, I give as much as I can. Um, and so people tend to do the same with me. So um, I had friends who were interviewing VAs and they had like, hey, I interviewed like 20 VAs or, or whatever. And uh, I, I hired I my three, two, yeah. but the third one is awesome. And I feel bad I didn't pick him. Do you want him? So that's how that ended up for me. But Typically, um, onlinejobs.ph has a great yeah. website for Filipino VAs. You can create a profile. Um, there's like short courses you can take on how to hire. Um, you'll get flooded with um, applications. You can put like little hidden questions in your um, job post, you know, saying like, hey, look up, you know, such and such thing and put it in your email. And if they don't, then you know they didn't read your job description fully and they're not following directions. So you can kind of weed out those people. Um, yeah, so there's various things. And then you can just do a couple Zoom interviews with maybe your top 10 um, or five, whatever, and um, see who you click with. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what people do. Um, I uh, I took the easier way out by barring someone else's, but I'm going to need another one. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this time. And what kinds of tasks do, do, do your VAs, does your VA do? Um, a lot of like just um, checking of things. So I have... Um, you know, I use owner res. We've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. uh, I have um, guests sign a rental agreement and upload the copy of the driver's license. So he makes sure the driver's license matches the name on the reservation, the name on the credit card, the age is over 25, all those types of things. Mm. Uh, checks in with the cleaners on supplies, um, does some of the guest communication. Um, I still kind of like doing that a bit. Um, I do the pricing. He, he gives me some summary reports on the pricing. Um, I'm still fairly involved because um, yeah. I'm still launching some doing design and stuff like that with my designers. Um, so, but yeah, maybe in future years, I'll probably offload even more. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for three VAs. But right now, um, you know, for the reasons of needing the hours and also um, just kind of feeling like it's my baby, um, oh, I don't really yeah. give away too much of it. Yeah. yeah. Now you mentioned um summary re reports. What what kind of reports are they? Oh yeah. So just um you know with Price Labs, just kind of screenshots of like neighborhood data, so I can see how um the rest of the, the local um competition is booked. Like you know, if I'm not booked at a price, and we see um eighty percent of the market's booked, um and it's uh two weeks out, maybe I should lower my pricing. Mm. Um, just to get a sense of occupancy. Then we have Rank Breeze. So he screenshots my um, my listings to see what page I'm on on Airbnb. So, um, you know, for SEO, uh, you want to be on the first page as much as possible. So most of my listings are a couple waiver here and there. Um, so I just like to track the health of my um, listing. He does some um, heart trading for me on Facebook groups, stuff like that. So there's so much like you, you could you could go crazy, like not crazy, but you could do a lot. Um, so, um, there was like an org chart, actually. The thank you for visiting. Um, do you ever listen to their, uh, oh, podcast? Okay. I, I, I've, I've heard of their podcast. But, yeah. but, 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 very <laughs> women, um, with a lot of experience, um, and they just shared like an org chart and I'm like, oh yeah, this is great because these are where you'll have to like, they have like, you know, seven different areas and you're like, okay, these are all the who's I need to find. Um, yeah. so I can get the house done. Cause right now, 
I'm in that mentality of like, I can do everything better, but um, I really need to kind of uh, give me, give me some more bandwidth back. So, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm looking for like all these different roles that I can do to have outsourced and I've outsourced some, but I'm in that in-between phase. So. Yeah. 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 It's, there's, there's definitely a, a learning curve that happens with hiring of you know, a VA or someone to help you. And the first thing there is even just accepting that, you don't want to be the bottleneck in your business because even though you can do it, even though you yep. feel that you can do it, you know, the best, you right. really need to free your mind for expansion. Yes. Yes. yes agreed. Um, yeah. So that's part of my, you know, roadmap for 2024 to enable my VA more and also um, build the team out more. So I'm listening to a lot of um, uh, like, you know, just these uh, business type books, you know, like, who not how uh, gap in the gain, all those types of things. A lot of people listen to Benjamin Hardy books, yep. and then uh, Benjamin Hardy. <laughs> it's fun, you know. You and I met at um, the Build STR Wealth Conference with Bill mm -hmm. Faith years ago, mm -hmm. um, last year in November, just like I guess a couple months ago. Um, we a bunch of us went to the Tony Robbins uh, Unleash the Power Unleash Within. Power Within, yep. Like 170 doctors there, so that was like a great experience. Um, really, just networking, connecting with everyone, and just kind of also doing all that introspection on kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, so it's been like a really cool journey because without the real estate, I don't think I would have been open to all this. I would have just kind of been mm -hmm. thinking about doing the same stuff that I've been doing, which is awesome. You know, being a radiologist is awesome. I love uh, reading cases, but like, you know, it's also like I'm 10 years out now and it's like, oh, is this it? No, there's like, so exactly. much pro, um, you know, and, yeah, and there's progress you're growing, and and so it's yeah. nice to keep up something else. So I, it sounds like your life, should I say, and not trying to put words in your mouth, but compared to you in 2018 to you now, it sounds like there's a bit of a difference. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd say so. I mean, busy. How would you say, yeah? Um, yeah, I mean, a little older, a little less hair. <laughs> I put on my STR 15, so I'm going to work on losing that. Um, you're, you're, you're also, yes, I'm just joking. But uh, I mean, that's true, but I'm, I'm joking about all those things. The, uh, in terms of, yes, I'm busier, but um, I have alternate streams of income. I have more equity in real estate. Um, so, yeah, I'm positioning our family for a future. Um, so, yeah, and, and I just feel like I'm more empowered because I, I have this like side that. thing that I'm, I'm building so yeah, it, it's it's a nice. Trying, yeah, that's good. Um, so if you were to, if, if someone were to ask you, you know, we hear all these rumblings in the market. We hear of basically some people are saying, "Oh my goodness, you know, Airbnb is named the thing, right?" Um, what is your take on on the market right now, based on your on your current experience? Do you are you yeah. you know do you think it's something I want to keep keep doing? keep acquiring holding steady like where is your mind right now i mean i just acquired two more in this quarter so i guess i'm, I'm that's going, what you need to know you just know. Know. <laughs> i don't know if i'm going to continue to go um that much further in terms of acquiring i mean like i said i'm going to do a lot of inner work on the the business kind of uh reinforcing um the infrastructure so yeah. it'll be it'll be easier to kind of expand um and i you know it doesn't have to be a one play kind of yeah. thing there. So, um, you know, I might recycle some of these lower performing units. Everything's performing well, profitable, mm -hmm. um, but kind of recycle some of the lower performing ones into LTRs that are more passive. Okay. I have one LTR in Indianapolis and it's like literally just mailbox money. So mm. maybe let's do some more of that. Um, and then um, uh, what else? So you're asking me, um, what do you think about the market? You hold oh, right, right. So I, I, I feel like I did. I was fortunate that I, I am kind of dollar cost averaging in this, but I did do the big bolus at the 3% interest rate. So mm -hmm. I feel fortunate that way. I got a lot of equity that way. And then also the lower rates, but I did buy two this quarter at higher rates. I did buy one last uh, year in Q4. So I had like a pretty, um, uh, most of 2023, I wasn't buying uh, mostly because I was trying to find a beach house in Jersey and there aren't many of that cash flow. So mm -hmm. I ended up a lot of time hitting my head against the wall there. But um, but yeah, I mean, I have some, so my interest rates range from 
you know, two and a quarter on my primary up to 6.75. So my weighted average is probably below 4%, like just okay. like high, high 3.9s. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel good about that number based on historical data, um, based on cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, my concern was when the market was like, um, booming in like 2022, people were buying properties, not people I know, but people like on some of the Facebook groups. Yeah. They would advertise them as property did $100,000 in revenue in 2021. And so it should be a million dollars, 10% rule. That 10 was like, rule. <laughs> like, it was like, it was never a real rule, but it was all of a sudden a rule by the realtors, you know? So I saw a lot of people buying that way. And so those people, if they bought when interest rates were higher, I kind of worry about their cash flow. But, um, so I don't know. I think there might be some turnover there, but I don't know if it, how much volume that is. Um, and, uh, you know, as interest rates come down now, maybe there'll be, I think there's a lot of money on the sidelines. So I really can't predict what's going to happen. Yeah. I, if there's a lot of job loss with the recession, if there is a recession, you know, interest rates are coming down, down yeah. it's coming down, but um, it's unclear if there's going to be job loss related to um, the inflation coming down with, with mm -hmm. the interest rates having been higher earlier. Mm -hmm. So, if there is significant job loss, people may lose their homes. And there may be some movement in the market in, in terms of pricing coming down. But if there isn't, if we have that soft landing people talk about, maybe, um, you know, there's all this money on the sidelines. People are going to start buying again. So I really don't know what 2024 yeah. is going to hold. So, yeah, um, it's, it's you know, been, yeah. Numbers, I, I buy, you know, a lot of times, you, have other, you know, tax benefits and everything else. You got to look at the whole picture. But, you know. Do you have do you have cash flow criteria that you normally buy with? Um, like cash for cash? Yeah, uh, not a hard and fast rule. I mean, like yeah. in twenty twenty, I was like, oh, if you know, if it's like, I don't know, I just plug it in and I'd be like, oh, it's seventy percent, and I didn't even use cost seg yet. Like this is insane. I'm like, there must be something wrong with this. I'll just find out. And then it was like higher. Like mm -hmm. okay, so um, twenty twenty one, I was just buying it was kind of like the same you know maybe a little lower 2022 um i was reaping some of the rewards of new builds that had been purchased earlier um but then 2023 as i looked at deals i mean i had to be much more specific on my data and the spreadsheet um and then i'd at least want to have 10 percent, but that's yeah. kind of too low. um so you know 20 to 30 but it's yeah. not it's obvious if you're going to get it because you just don't know which way revenue is going. I found like in the middle of 2023, um, the market just kind of like lost a little bit of its wind um, mm -hmm. in terms of bookings. So I was just not sure, certain of like kind of what the... Um, what it was going to do. The, yeah. The, uh, so, you know, when I was buying in 2020, I'd be very conservative in my numbers. I'd underwrite with that, you know, for that property that I did 168, I was underwriting at 80 mm. and I was getting plus percent so it's just different um you know we all have different reasons for why we want to buy so um like the one i'm buying in um in one of my markets right now uh it needed um it had a basement bedroom with window and everything um that was just a storage closet so i'm going to finish that so there's some hidden value so i'm doing a little bit more of that kind of stuff yeah um, so i think long term it'll be it'll be fine um, and I think it's in a market that's growing and it's going to do well. So, and where uh, is this one? Uh, Asheville. Okay. Yeah. And, I've, been, I've been hearing a lot about Asheville too. Okay. Yeah. And, and so then I bought, also, I'm also buying another one in the Smokies just because I know that market is pretty easy for me to kind of expand there. Um, I got a base hit, something that'll do well. And I don't, I don't really know how well it'll do, but I think it'll do just fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the numbers are harder. I mean, it, yeah. It, yeah. And it's harder to get started. I, I understand, you know, but if the rates come down, I think it, it'll kind of open up some opportunities again. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's funny that, so for the longest time, I've been thinking about interest rates as, oh, you know, just the cost of doing business. And um, it was a few days ago while we were on one of our, of our calls that I, that I was, I was showing, you know, a few people like just how the numbers worked and we plugged it in with an eight, with the 8% interest rate. That's, you know, kind of been like the prevailing whatever rate. And then I plugged it in with the four percent, and I was like, "Holy smokes!" I mean, I knew that the interest rate, <laughs> but it yeah. wasn't until that Huge evening yeah. that it hit me in the face, like, "Oh my goodness!" Oh. 
it's so much harder to find, you know, great, great cash flow. But the fact is, if you do find something that cash flows at 8% or 6 point whatever percent now, and the interest rates drop, then you basically just, you know, <laughs> you really scored on that one because now all that extra, all that extra cash is basically yours if you refinance, obviously. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what's your what's your you know big picture plan if you have one if you want to share one like yeah where are you looking you know what are you thinking of doing going forward? Um, yeah, so I think like I mentioned, I was going to sell maybe two or oh three. yeah yeah. Yeah, you did say so. Yeah, just, um, LTR, so I'm looking for some LTR partners um, for 1031. Um, I run a group with Jessica Folger called the STR Collective. Um, I really enjoy being in that. Um, it's nice to kind of uh, learn from everyone, also mentor some people, and uh, just to kind of trade, um, you know, like live kind of information about what's going on. Um, so to continue growing that, um, maybe even do a live in-person retreat. We've been doing a bunch of our meetups with like UPW, the Build STR conference, but maybe do one of our own. Your own, uh, nice. And then um, what else? Uh, I don't know, maybe buy a business or, or something like that, but I don't know. I'm just also just enjoy life a little more. Yeah. <laughs> but I take all my vacations and, and then travel and with the family and everything, but maybe just kind of enjoy more day to day. Um, because I think when you acquire properties, uh, you know, it takes a it takes some bandwidth that you don't it really does. notice at first, but it, and you're always thinking about, oh, okay, did the door locks come? Did the guy go uh, set it up? Did he do that? Actually, that reminds me. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, do I have a guest coming in? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, yeah. So, um, nothing too dramatic right now. Um, get back, get back to my pre-STR uh, fitness level. <laughs> stuff like that amazing 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 wow neil thank you so much thank you so much dr shah for hanging out with us here and str fest listen guys he mentioned a number of people avery carl will be interviewing her as well who else did you mention you mentioned just a bunch of people um, well, with the build str conference bill faith oh you yeah know, bill faith as well quite a bit on the gulf shores property he walked it and he goes neil if you don't effing buy this i will because I was like, I don't know if it's a good property. I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, and he walked in. He's like, Neil, he like got on the phone on FaceTime. And he was he walked right up to it. You know, this is kind of what Bill would do, right? With this yeah. Person, imposing body. And he goes, if you don't buy this, I will. And I was like, all right, I'm buying this. All right, <laughs> fine. <laughs> that was one of my best properties too. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, he did. He's a great uh, guy. Is and it waterfront? Uh, water views. Water so view. It's in that perfect tick mark. You know, tier two, you're not paying for beachfront. Yes. Um, but you're getting the views and the guests. That's what they want, and you, you, you get not quite waterfront rent, but you get more than you would. More than also. you would if you were farther back. Yeah. And okay. so your returns are. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you're. There's like a bunch of people that we've been, uh, um, you know, working with uh, in the STR Collective and and elsewhere. But a lot of people that you know, you know, we've had Ryan Bakey on, Kenny Bedwell. Yeah. Tyler, Avery, Bill, yeah, it's 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 really great. Um, the network of people that we have available to us, the internet's been good. Amazing, it's amazing that that little blue app called Facebook. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, guys, um, how can people find you, Neil? Um, I guess the SDR Collective Facebook group, Facebook Messenger, if you want to message me. Um, yeah, yeah. and uh, I look forward to your, reading your book and uh, you know learning more about this conference too. So. Thank you. Super, super excited. S exciting things happening. Thank you so much, Dr. Shah, for hanging out with us today, guys. He said STR Collective Facebook group. That's where you can you can find him. You can find him on Facebook as well, Dr. Neil Shah. Um, have an amazing time, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. I hope you got a ton of value from this interview. Now, if you got any value from it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get your copy of the STR Blueprint to get your first or next short-term rental, go to thestrbook.com.